Hello everybody, this is Wesley Ninja Sapphire back with another video. Aw oh, yeah. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a super simple villager cure. Have you ever wanted to have full diamond armor sets, books like Mending, Efficiency 5, Prot 4, and more, all for basically free? This is the video for you. Let's get into it. So how we're going to get all of that stuff for free is basically when you take a zombie villager and cure it with a weakness potion and a golden apple, it'll give you massive discounts on its trade when it gets cured. Since you can cure things up to five times, you can get basically anything villagers sell for one emerald, and I have an easy way to get infinite emeralds that I will talk about later in the video. Also keep in mind that this is not the best villager cure you can make. This is just something you can make within a day of starting your world, so you can have all those OP things really quickly, but also without the hassle of boating villagers everywhere and using jank setups that take forever to use, and that can lose the villager in the process. This design is by no means set in stone. I encourage you to mess around with it depending on how many resources you have. So the first thing you're going to want to make is a villager breeder. I personally like the one by Impulse SV, which I will link in the description, but there are others, maybe even better designs out there, so you don't have to use his. This video is about the villager curing aspect though, so I'll just be spawning in villagers with a spawn egg to demonstrate things. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make this little structure right here. Go back to it. Put two powered rails here, and powered rails leading up to it. Basically, your villager breeder would be over here, uh, and the villagers would come in through here. Make sure that these are powered, make sure that this has a button on it, put glass around it because the villagers can go through glass without taking damage, and then you're going to want to put a zombie right here, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So the easiest way i found to get a zombie in to here, go up two blocks here, one block here, go up two here, and place one here. So you have this structure here, and then take this, place a trap door on it, to up there. So basically what you're going to want to do is that when a, you find a good zombie, which I'll talk about in a second, you're going to run over here with it chasing you, it come up here, it's going to go on this block, and then you're just going to trap it like that. So basically what a good zombie is, is it'll be able to pick up items, because zombies that can pick up items don't despawn once they are holding an item. That way you don't have to use name tags to stop them from despawning. So basically what I do is, if I go into survival here, I see a bunch of zombies, so I'm just going to drop a bunch of dirt, see if any of them can pick it up. Like I can. So then we're just going to run on up here, place this block here, but like I can too. And you want to kill the guy that can't. And then, no, oh my god, we got three. That's insane. Okay, so we have this guy trapped. So then you can just sleep or something, just make sure that you have locks above him. So then if we, you know, quote unquote sleep, let all the other ones die. So this guy is in, they place another block above him, and we're good. We have him trapped. And also he won't, like, leave and go onto these tracks because uh, mobs don't like to walk over tracks. Also, just so you know, in hard mode, zombies spawn that can pick up items, they spawn more frequently. And also, you have to be on hard mode, otherwise some of your villagers won't get turned into zombie villagers when they get killed by the zombies. So make sure you're on hard. It's imperative that you're on hard mode. Also, you can, uh, if the zombie can pick up items, you can throw them a sword, and they'll pick it up, which will make them deal more damage to the villagers, so they'll kill them faster. So next, you're going to want to make the place where they are going to cure. So, go up the normal two blocks, make sure it has power, place it over here, button, glass again, and there and there. And yeah, so basically, once it gets zombified, you'll press the button and it'll come in its minecart all the way over in here, and then you can just chuck the weakness potion at it, and then the, give it the golden apple, and it'll cure. Also, make sure that you put a covering over this, so that when the villager is zombified, he doesn't burn up. So, when you come over here to get cured, I'll have a covering over him so he doesn't burn. So next, you're going to want to make where you view all his trades, so that you can get all the, the good trades, and I'll, I'll go over that more in my demonstration, basically, come here, across um, here, Yeah, 
yeah, so you can sit here and do all those trades as many times as you want. And for a little bit extra safety, you can do something like this. So the final thing that you're going to want to have is a place to store the villagers, like a trading hall. And this part is probably like really, really simple compared to most other trading halls. So basically each cell is just this. This is where the villager would be. This will be where the like lectern or whatever will be, the workstation for the villager. A torch at the back, door on the front. You can also optionally have a sign here to say like what the villager has on it or something. Besides the number button here. And yeah, then you can just make a ton of these. So I'm just gonna make another one right now. That's just two cells that are super secure and easy to use and ready to use. Well, other thing is that if you want to cure villagers more than once, you can have another track coming off of this. So like say your villager breeder is that way, you can just have this come here and then once you do want to, you just have to remember to like break this, replace this, and yeah, then your villager can come all the way over here, maybe put a couple of power rails unless you just want to push it the whole way. So it's time for the demonstration part of this, so you can actually see how this works. Basically, it's just simulating a villager coming in from the villager breeder. Whatever. You can press this button and come over here. Yes. And there we go, villager finally cured, and you heard that noise, that means that he did cure. So basically how trade will be rolling is basically you can place down this lectern, and he'll give you maybe multi-shot. I don't really want multi-shots, I'll try again. This time he gave me a bookshelf trade, which is alright, but eh. I can keep doing this. Now he's just giving me bookshelf trades, but... Loyalty too? Nah, not really a fan. Curse of Binding? I don't really need that. Last Protection 3? And so basically, yeah, you can just keep doing this over and over and over until you get a trade that you like. So, I got like a Mending trade, right? But the problem is that it's 10 emeralds, and that's a lot. Another thing I recommend is that you always keep a bunch of emeralds and books on you because you have to lock in their trades. Otherwise, they can just randomly change their trades on you. Which is not fun when you just spend an hour trying to find mending and then they just trade it because you didn't have any emeralds. So make sure to keep maybe either just like a chest nearby full of emeralds or just have an inventory full. Not inventory full, but you know, have emeralds and books on you. So now that you have that, cut out here. I want him to go again, so I'll place that back there. Place this here. That. And basically, each time you cure it, he keeps his trades, he just gives an even bigger discount on it. So, we'll send him off. Guess what? We get to cure him again. Get more weakness, more golden apple, and get ready to wait. While we're waiting for this guy to cure, we can also come over here and replace down this rail. Also open up a spot for him. So you grab this, or you break this, place that, so that he'll fall right down there when it's time. And there we go, 
he cured again. This time, if we check his trades, he has it at 1. We just send him off into here. Now that he's here, we can press this again, because we, if you didn't see, came over here, made this. We just want to like break the block and then place three blocks around it, so he will just fall on in. So send him off. Break that left turn. Give him a new one. And yeah, we just come up here. We place this. Place those. And you have yourself a mending villager. So now that I've shown you this whole contraption, you still may be wondering how you get weakness potions and golden apples. To get weakness potions, you're first going to want to put three water bottles in a brewing stand. You get that from just taking glass bottles, right clicking, pull up water, get water bottles. You're then going to want to get a fermented spider eye, which is crafted from sugar, brown mushrooms, and spider eyes. Spider eyes you can get from killing spiders at night, sugar you can get from sugar cane, which like just in this world, just go a bit over here, there's some sugar cane right there, there's some more over that hill, so just explore a little bit and you should be able to find some. Final thing is brown mushrooms, which you can either get from a roofed forest, these big brown mushrooms here, you can break them with an axe and they'll drop tons of brown mushrooms, or you can get them by going into the nether. Just in here, uh, let's see if we can find an actual mushroom, yeah, a bunch of brown mushrooms right here. Then, for a golden apple, you want to get apples, which you can get from either breaking a bunch of oak leaves, but that is tedious and slow, so if you need a lot of them, you can get a farmer villager. Farmer villagers have a chance to sell you four apples for only one emerald at apprentice level. Then, for the gold, you can either go mining underground in the overworld, like right here, we found a bunch of gold, or my personal favorite way is to go into the nether. And if you have a Fortune 3 pickaxe, this is even better. And just around, there's some gold right there. And then if we look around some more, we can see another gold vein over here. Can mine that whole thing. And then probably another gold vein over there. More up there. Gold just everywhere in the nether. And I got a ton of gold just from that one vein alone. Okay, so my last big tip for this video is how to get infinite emeralds for basically free. So, if you come in here, I got this villager. He basically sells me an entire bookshelf for one emerald, and then he buys a book for one emerald. So, I can buy a bookshelf. Come out, and if I go into survival, get an axe. And break it. I get three books back. So I just made two emerald profit. Just like that. And I can just keep on doing this. He will have to restock. But as long as you're willing to put in a little bit of time, just AFK while his trades are still like restocking, then you can just get just tons of emeralds. And you can also get multiple of these guys, so it can go even faster. So yeah guys, that's about it for this video. With everything I showed you and a little bit of time, you can have full sets of diamond armor, any enchantment you can think of, infinite of the best food in the game, and more, all for free. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'd love to help. That's going to be it for today, though. Have a wonderful day, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!